Physical science time. Where is my marker? Physical science. Physical science. What? Oh, here it is. Physical science time. Physical We're gonna talk about time. gas laws. So write this down. Gas. gas laws. There are there are three what we call basic gas laws. Um, we're going to talk about, your book talks about two of them, I think because the third one has a silly name and so we don't really want to, it's, it's named after a French guy, but people think it's funny, especially freshmen. You are freshmen. So the first thing we're going to talk about though is pressure. We're going to revisit pressure. Pressure equals what? You should have it in your notes. It should be like one page back. Or the last one. Uh, P. Okay, sure. <laughs> P equals? Uh, force times air divided by Force divided by air. Make sure you have capital P for pressure, capital F for force, and capital A for area. Pressure equals force divided by area. Force measured in? Let's do this in our normal way. P is pressure. This is all a review. Measured in, we're going to talk about it in a second. F is Force measured in, as you said, newtons. A is area measured in. What do we usually? What would be the SI unit for an area? Centimeters. Mm, meters. Meters squared. Squared. Square. Meters squared. Now pressure. Then, if P equals F over A, pressure is force divided by area. Pressure unit is going to be equal to what unit divided by what unit? Newtons divided by meters. Yeah. Newton per square meter, which we call, this is equal to capital P lowercase a, which is the unit Pascal, which is named after a man called Blaise Pascal, which is a sweet name. Um, but the unit Pascal is the SI unit for pressure. The trouble with the Pascal is that a meter, my arms are maybe 90% of a meter long. And so a square meter would be like, if I sit like this, this is an area, if you imagine, another me with his arm out like this. The square formed by these two legs and legs. two legs over here. Right? The legs of the square. These are actually human arms. But you know what I mean? This size of area is about a square meter. Okay? No. A Newton no. is a pretty small force. A Newton, the, something with a uh, weight of a Newton would have a mass of about uh, 100 grams. So something that's 100 grams may be... Your microphone. No, that's, right, that's quite a bit more than that. Your empty cup. Just think about this thing. Maybe, maybe the weight of this thing has a weight of about 100 newtons. Uh, or sorry, one newton. So this has a, we'll say, a weight of about one newton. And so if I have, my pressure is a force divided by an area, and the area is this size, and the weight is about like this, is that a very large pressure? We talked yesterday about how the pressure when you poke yourself in the in the arm with your pencil, right? It's a small little area you can put quite a bit of force on. It. You can put this much force on it. Like if you imagine me doing this, it doesn't really that doesn't feel like anything, right? Yeah, so so is it a very large pressure if we have an area of this size with this much weight? No, not really at all. In fact, um, we usually almost always use something called a kilo pascal, which is yeah. a thousand pascals. But um, because this unit is so, 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 so small. So we generally use kilopascals. Um, and even then, the atmosphere, just the gas above us, exerts a pressure of about 100 kilopascal. It's about the, the pressure exerted by the atmosphere. And so it's a, it's a pretty small unit. We generally use kilopascals. Did you have a question for me? Uh, nothing. So we, but this is the SI unit for pressure. And we're going to need that here pretty quick. Because all of these gas laws, well, not all of them, but two of the three gas laws we're going to talk about relate to pressure. All the gas laws' jobs are to, gas laws relate pressure exerted by a gas to its two nouns. What, what, what do you think is going to change depending on the pressure of a gas? Uh, the density. Okay, that's true, but that's not what we, that's, that's a good suggestion, right? Sure. The, we are just no, 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 the pressure. What could change about a gas? If, it, if we put, if a gas is exerting more pressure, it what might happen to it? it Temperature is one of them. Bigger and smaller? Yeah, and, and what do we call that? Size. Bigger and smaller are, it's called, not size, come on, the science word for big and small. Volume. Volume. Huh? Volume and temperature. 
I'm glad you did say mass, though, because can the mass of it change? Yeah. 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 Nope. For, for a certain amount of gas, oh, the mass like, is not going to change forever. Okay. No matter how big the balloon gets, like if we heat up a balloon and it gets bigger, like in your lab, or if we cool down a balloon and it gets bigger, which is not supposed to happen, but if we change the temperature of a balloon and its volume gets bigger, its mass didn't actually change, right? Its volume just changed. So all of the gas laws relate these three things, pressure, temperature, and volume. The first one we're going to talk about, they all have names and they're all named after you. The first one is called Boyle's Law. Boyle's. Is it Boyle's? Nope, it's a man's name. Uh. Boyle's Law. And this one relates pressure and volume. Oh, like a leather one? As I put more pressure, this should be a fairly simple question. If I have a balloon, we're going to have a balloon as an example. I'll think about this. You have a balloon. As I put more pressure on the balloon, what's going to happen to its volume? It's going to go bigger. Try again. It kind of no, it's going to get bigger. Tell me, tell me that if I sit on a balloon, it's not going to get bigger. No, it's going to expand. It's going to go out. It's going to, the pressure is going to push it out. Yeah, if you only if you put just pressure in one spot, sure, yeah. it'll flatten out. We're talking about if I increase the pressure all together on the Oh, it's going to shrink. Oh. Whatever, whatever. Boyle's law relates pressure and volume, and they are what kind of proportional? Yeah, if the more pressure I put on it, the smaller it gets, they're inversely proportional. And that's the Boyle's law. Pressure and volume in class. are inversely proportional. We can write this in this way. P1 V1 equals P2 V2. What do the ones and the twos represent, do you think? I don't know. Um, the amount of... No, that's a good guess, though. These are kind of like before and after. So this would be pressure at time one and volume at time one, those two things multiplied together, is equal to the pressure at time two multiplied by the volume at time two. So if I make the pressure bigger, What's going to happen to the volume? What well, has to happen to the volume if these two are remaining constant? It has to get smaller, right? Yes, wait. So is that the reason why, why if you go going down deep into the ocean, your submarine has a chance of being crushed? Like exactly, you can? exactly. Because the submarine is full of a gas. And so the further down we go in the ocean, the greater the pressure the ocean is exerting on. And so the volume of the submarine would tend to decrease. Right? So if you have very, if you have a poorly built submarine, it's gonna, the volume of it will decrease and it will be crushed inside of it. So, so so it be cool. When we look at this equation, what, what is, mathematically do we always need from an equation? Is it gonna work to have two variables on one side of the equation? No. No, so we're always going to have to manipulate that. You might write that down somewhere. All these equations are always going to have to be manipulated. For instance, if I wanted to find pressure two, what would my equation look like? If I wanted to find pressure 2, what would my equation look like? Yeah, P1 times V1 divided by V2. So pressure 1 times volume 1 divided by volume 2. That's Boyle's law. In, in words, we can say it as the greater the pressure on a gas, the smaller its volume. As an equation, it is P1V1 equals P2V2. This is called Boyle's Law. You have to have these memorized, and you have to remember which one goes with which. There are three. The way I don't remember, well, we'll find that in a second, but I have a special way to remember Boyle's Law. Let's talk about Charles' Law now. No, what, what, what's your way? I will talk about it in a second, but it's, okay. gonna, it's nice to know about Charles' Law first. Charles' Law. Put the apostrophe after the S, because we call it Charles'. Oh, your bookie puts apostrophe S apostrophe. Depends on how you say it. If you say Charles' Law, the man's name was Charles. That's his last name. If you say Charles' law, possesses, Charles you should spell it like this. If you say Charles's law, which I guess is fine too, Charles you should put S apostrophe S. It doesn't really matter. Charles' law. Um, so Charles. if this one was relating pressure and volume, the next one is relating volume and temperature. Charles is a shh. Please wait. Thank you. Be silent. Oh, she was wondering who, how to pronounce it. So what happens to a... What happens to a balloon if I heat that, or what should happen to it? It'll expand. It'll expand. It'll expand. So, so what's the relationship between positive directly proportional? Right. So volume and temperature 
will be, well, if you put too much heat, it'll pop. Directly proportional. And why is that way? Well, because it's rubber, so it's going to melt. No. Good guess. If it's a balloon, part. yeah. Well, because then it'll get too big, and then it'll Three. boom. That's why. So the volume increases enough that the balloon, the, the rubber of the balloon can no longer contain it. So that's why a balloon pops if it gets too hot. So because volume and temperature are directly proportional, we're going to write this V1 over capital T. That should be capital T. Capital T is pressure. I'm, what? No, it's not. Capital T is temperature. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. To make volume 2 by itself, it's pretty easy, right? It's just T2 V1 over T1 equals V2. But if, listen to me, please. If we need to find T2, if we need to find T2 first, we have to do what? Well, then you manipulate it to where the T2's over on the right, other side. Right, we have to get T2 on the top first. So we end up with T2 V1 over T1 equals V2. And then we get everything else gone. So it'll be T2 equals V2 T1 over V1. Um, it, we'll talk about manipulation later while you're doing your worksheet. But uh, So Boyle's Law, the greater the pressure, the lower the volume. Charles' Law, the greater the temperature, the greater the volume. Okay? The way I kind of remember these is that, and this might be a stupid way, but boils, that reminds me of boiling water, right? Which obviously has to do with temperature. And so I remember that Boyle's Law is the one that doesn't have temperature. <laughs> so like I said, that's not a great way to remember it, but that's, that is truly how I do it. So, so Boyle's Law is the one that doesn't have temperature. Charles' Law does have temperature. It's volume and temperature. There's a third one called Gay-Lussac's Law. That's so funny, Wade. You're so funny, Wade. That's such a mature thing to laugh about. Okay, that's a man's name. So the the this is a man's name from France in the 1800s, the late 1800s. Um, but Gay Lussac's law. Well, so what what are the ones that are left? Where is this probably going to be related? We have three things that they all relate. We have pressure and volume. We have volume and temperature. What's this one going to be? Pressure and temperature. Gay Lussac's law. So. Think about this. Have you ever, you, you grill or do you know someone who grills or have you ever been around a grill outside with a propane tank on it? Yes. So propane is a gas. Um, yeah. So as the pressure is released from that propane, it colder. gets colder, right? So pressure has gone down. So if pressure goes down, what happened to the temperature? Down. It went down too. So pressure and temperature are what kind of proportional? Directly. Yep. Like, does are, that mean that the like an air should be hot? Um, ask your question in one second, Ben. I'm going to finish writing this first. Pressure and temperature are directly proportional, so our math for that is going to be this. Sorry. Well, well, well another example is whenever you just sit there and spray an air can, but the yeah. can will get cold. P1 over T1 Ding. equals P2 over T2 is our equation for uh, Gay Lussac's law. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Uh, Peyton asked, how come then, if the pressure is high in the ocean, the ocean itself isn't hot? And the answer is, for all of these, it's not having high pressure that makes something hot. It's as the pressure increases, it makes it hot. And it's right? not increasing, it's it, Yeah, it stay, the pressure stays the same even though it is high. It's not about the quantity of these things, it's about how much they change. It's all about change in them. So, uh, the example, I don't know if we were able to hear on the video either, but the example the Wade gave was that if you have an aerosol can and you just, like, you got your Axe body spray because you're trying to get some ladies. And so you just, you sit there and you're just like, come on, ladies, and just hold it. I shoot flames with that. It gets colder, right? The, the Axe body spray, the can itself gets colder because the pressure is releasing. So, uh, what would happen, explain now then, how come when I air up my bike pump, or air up my tires on my bike with a bike pump, how come it gets hotter? Well, because it's getting, because it's getting more pressure. Yeah, so it, it, part, part of it might be friction. I'm sure some of it's friction. But the main reason it gets hotter is the pressure is increasing. And in fact, this is when people uh, think about like a, the space shuttle coming into the atmosphere. 
and they think about how, you know, there's like this red, oops, uh -huh. red, there's like this red bubble around it, you know, when it comes to the atmosphere, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. People think that's sure, because, blame. and probably in elementary school you might even have been told, it's because the friction with the air molecule, and that is not the case. What's happening is, as it comes in so fast, it's increasing the pressure on the air in front of it so much that it's heating up, enough that we can see the air glow because it gets so hot, because so the pressure blame. increases so much. Yes, pardon yeah. Um, so this is, these are the, the three gas laws you need to know. We'll talk about how to mathematically operate with them after the video, and you'll have a worksheet to do. But if you have any questions about these conceptually, like the words, how they relate to each other? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it? Mm -hmm. oh, well, I asked you what your question is. Like, I said, you have questions, and you said, yeah. So. Oh, no. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Bye.